And well, what about this survey? Um, okay. Um, uh, this survey was designed with the objective of evaluating the ab internal trabeculotomy with the KDB in glaucoma patients. So, 11 surgeons from nine different centers uh, are participating in this study, and we obtained data from, from patients who underwent um, trabeculotomy. We have data related to the development of the disease, such as glaucoma type, glaucoma severity, the number of glaucoma medications or previous glaucoma surgeries, and data related to the physical examination, such as visual acuity, IUP, and the angle opening using the Schaffer scale. Uh, we also have data related to the surgical technique, such as the corneal incision size used to introduce the KDB, the amount of trabecular mesh work uh, removed, the, which quadrants were treated, and if we combine the surgery with fake or with another mixed procedure. And we also ask the surgeons um, some questions to evaluate the ease of use of this device. Um, likewise, we have this data for the follow-up, but as this study has not been completed for the one year period, the results I'm going to present to you are preliminary results. Okay. To this day, we have 31 patients who underwent uh, trabeculotomy with the KDB, with primary open angle glaucoma being the most common diagnosis in the 68% of the cases. We also have exfoliation and angle closure glaucoma. And it's important to note that the average damage of the disease was moderate to severe in, in these patients. And this perhaps correlates with the number of years that they have since their, their diagnosis but it's very likely that in many patients the disease was already advanced by the time of the, or the moment of the diagnosis. All the surgeries were combined in 48% of the cases with FACO and in 32 with FACO plus ECP. And such details, some details such as um, the length of the incision and the amount of trabecular mesh work removed were obtained, and also if this tissue were, um, could be removed out from the, from the anterior chamber using the KDB. So we have an incision of about 116 degrees, and in 80% of the patients, the surgeons were able to remove the strip of trabecular meshwork. The other 20%, uh, they only removed a partial strip. The next one, please. Okay. and. Uh, what questions did we ask to the surgeons to evaluate the ease of use? We asked them uh, three simple questions. The first one was if the, if the um, incision was straightforward toward the trabecular meshwork. The second one, and how easy was the entry into the canal. And the third one, if once in the canal, the advancement of the KDB was easy or not. And in the 97% of the cases, the surgeons agreed or strongly agreed with these three points. So, talking about the results, even though we do not have very high preparative IOP, it's not worth it that the decrease in the IOP is corre correlates with the decrease in the number of glaucoma medications. Uh, this is very important because the postoperative IOP is stayed in the low teens, and we were able to remove medication in this patient, thereby improving side effects and drug dependency while maintaining a good control IOP. With regard to complications, we, diphema was the most common adverse event in the 75% of the cases, but in all the patients, this diphema disappeared around the first week. Uh, but this was not like a traumatic diphema, this was blood reflux from the canal, so it's important to know that. Uh, we also have a patient with corneal edema, uh, associated mainly with the phaco, more than with the trabeculotomy, and a patient with a desamet tear that did not require any any further treatment. The presence of iridodialysis or cyclodialysis was considered minor because we do not have major complications related with these clefts, such as chronic hypotony. We only have one patient with a transient choroidal detachment that resolved in the first week. So just to conclude this presentation, I want to ask you what features or what characteristics do we all expect from a new device or a new technology.
In my opinion, there are four points that this device offers to us. The first one is reproducibility. And what do I mean with this? I mean that all the, all the surgeons with a good training can perform this surgery without any complications. In this case, all the, treatment, uh, all the treatments were completed successfully, so reproducibility is an important thing for the device. The other one is the safety. Safety not only during the surgery, but after it. Um, all the surgeons agreed that the entry and the advancement in the canal was easy or was smooth, and there were no major complications. Um, so safety is also an important thing. The next one, please. Practicality, and what do I mean with this term? I want to refer to two main aspects of this, of this word. The practicality that you can, um, you can combine the KDB with FACO or, or another mixed procedure, like in this case um, with ECP. And in the other hand, we have that this uh, device is portable. And in many countries, such as Mexico, where the surgeons have to travel long distance to treat locomo patients, you can bring it with you easily and you can offer these patients the benefits of, of mixed procedures, right? And the last one is efficacy. And I think it's the most important because a new technology that um, is useless or are not effective, we just don't use it or don't recommend it. And even though we have results, uh, preliminary results, all these points oriented us to think that the long-term uh, results can be very encouraging. So I think you like the, you have to try this, this surgery. It's very, it's a good option for patients with glaucoma. And these pictures are from the people of New World Medical when they went to Mexico. We have a great time there in the soccer field and they ate a lot of Mexican food, a lot of chili. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>